Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight in this very special edition. Special why I may hear you ask? Well we finally did it guys. We have reached the 10k milestone. I am so so happy. Of course none of that would have been possible at all without your support, your following, your love for the channel. So a big big thank you to all of you guys that have helped us get to where we are today. Now I've been thinking about a few ideas for a 10k special video or something and I'm struggling. So let me know in the comment section below guys, do you want to hear some sort of a QA? and a if you've got an idea for a potential special video? I do want to look into some merch actually, now we've got a nice new logo, I want to get some merch put together. So if you're interested in some merch, do let me know in the comment section below. But you're all here to see how we develop the next video. But before that, let's have a look back at what we worked on last week. So we spent the whole of last week working on the Shanklin-esque train station. And as always, you guys fed back some beautiful, beautiful comments. Some extremely nice stuff was said, as always, which I am always truly grateful for. The video itself, the build itself, I think went rather well. We have certainly got a good foundation down for this area now and we've got a train line that looks a bit more realistic and will hopefully bring in a lot more people to the area. Now a few of you guys suggested the Revo tracks as well for the railway so I will look at that at some point. It's not going to be a top priority thing, something we can sort of play around with at a later date but I do like the idea of changing that up and making them look a bit more realistic because they do look a bit I guess outdated compared to what there is on the workshop so we'll definitely do that um, and also the train line itself there is a few little bumps I do agree um, particularly around the the bridge areas so we can adjust those as well but I think we can work around that it's not a huge issue it's obviously a, a detailing thing that we should look at at some point but all in all I think it works well I think we've got a good foundation and it's going to lead on to a very nice next video which is what we're going to be building today so in today's episode we're going to be working on the industrial area of this build and this is actually built very much like for like in terms of what you see in real life shanklin well i say shanklin i think it's actually classed as lake which is the sort of neighboring town to this so we're going to work on this segment here i'm going to show you on screen the sort of area we could be working on so there's going to be a big section of industrial sort of small businesses warehouses etc alongside that a bit more commercial so we'll have a a, um, a shop a couple of shops in fact a couple of stores some more factory and warehouses some drive-through takeaways and a few other little bits and bobs there making more of i guess a retail park is what we'd class it as here in the uk um, so that's the plan for today we're going to try and build up as much as we can bring in a lot more um, well hopefully a lot more workers into this area make it feel a bit more busy um, and all in all each time we add to these sections we are building up the whole area which should as a result increase the amount of people that are walking around and yeah just make it look a lot more pleasant now you probably noticed in previous videos we have used some of these really nice UK factory assets um, now I haven't used them in such a large quantity such as I'm going to be doing today so I'm really excited for that because these buildings are so so good and there's such a good variance that we can really fulfill this whole area make it seem a lot more realistic by having a lot more different variants sometimes when you use too many of the same buildings it does look a little bit unrealistic I guess um, but we have the advantage of having so many to choose from that it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant build. Really excited. I haven't actually done anything like this for a little while, certainly UK themed. Um, I think my first British series, the British Challenge, as I called it, we had some of these down, but I don't think these particular ones were available at that time. I think it was more of the, the retail park ones um, done by, uh, I think, Rick 4000. So, again, we are extremely blessed to have so many good UK assets to play with here and uh, hopefully we can demonstrate how good these assets look in the build and show them off in all their glory. And I know there's a few comments last week as well or perhaps the week before about Aldi in the Isle of Wight and um, 
Yes, there is actually a couple of them around and particularly in this actual area we're working on, there is an Audi. So I wanted to make sure that I placed down that one just to follow trend and suit of what actually is here. Um, and we are trying our best to not so much copy, but put the same assets down um, in this area. So I'd be extremely intrigued by anyone who lives on the island or has been to this part of the island in Lake how close does it look at the end of the video? Because I was really happy of how well we got this down. Um, it's almost like the assets in the workshop were perfectly made for this particular part of the map, um, which is really, really incredible. Really, really good. Um, so on screen now, we are just putting together some of the drive through areas. Uh, we've got McDonald's here and a KFC. I forget what actually is in this area. I think it is just a KFC, but we had a bit more space, so I wanted to put a little drive through McDonald's. I've not actually used this actual McDonald's asset before. And it's really cool because it has a drive through section on the side, so you can then force a road around it to make it look realistic. So when people are driving through, it looks like they're actually stopping um, and taking time to buy their food from the drive through section. So I really do love that. And I've seen a lot of people do that already. Um, within City Skylines and I think it looks so, so cool. Really, really realistic. And we've also got the um, Premier Inn opposite the um, McDonald's area and KFC, which is again, very much like it is in this actual location. Um, so we are still having some difficulty when it comes to placing down some buildings with the terrain. Now, if you look at the difference between the map that we're working on here versus, for example, my Monaco series, it's extremely flat, <laughs> but we are still having some difficulties where the the lie of the land is a little bit too steep for placing in buildings. And this wouldn't normally be an issue, but again, as we mentioned previously, because we have these beautiful white cliff textures, it does look a bit funny when you level the land up a little bit too high. So I've been trying to find a few different techniques on how to um, get around that. Uh, whether we cover it with bushes and trees the old-fashioned way or if we put down some different texture sort of decals or cliffs over the top of it to keep the look the same but yeah make it feel and look a bit more realistic on screen now we're just putting in some fences I wanted to try and separate these areas up um, obviously the factory area is going to have gates around it for security and that sort of standard purposes um, and also the separation of the different segments, like we're now putting down this uh, garage and repair center. There's gonna be a few warehouses around. Um, that's gonna be obviously separated against the drive through of the McDonald's area and KFC. It's just, it just makes sense in my eyes. When you start adding fences and separations around, it just works. It makes it look tidy as well. And yeah, I think when you're looking on a ground sort of first person level view it just makes it pop that little bit more so I wanted to try and carry that feeling on um, and also I wanted to make this area feel a lot more concrete if that makes sense obviously there's not gonna be as much grass this is all gonna be industrial there's gonna be a few bits of grass where you know it's been kept there to make the area look a bit more pretty but where these warehouses are, you're gonna pretty much just have blocks of concrete. It's more realistic in this sense. You're not gonna have little verges of grass around it. The people who have brought the land to build their factories on, etc., are gonna maximize the space as best they can. It's gonna be mostly concrete areas around here. Um, so that was the plan and I think it works out quite nicely in the end. The only difficulty that I did have was ensuring we had enough um, sceneries or enough things to put into these gaps to not make it look too empty. Um, I mean obviously some segments are going to have bigger concrete areas where lorries are having to turn around and drop off deliveries etc. Like this particular part we're working on here just across here from the uh, garage is a few warehouses and you can imagine that the lorries will need a big turning circle to drop off their goods um, and obviously a lot of car parking spaces are key to fill in these gaps as well so sort of all in all it works out a lot nicer in that way um, and we've had to try and force the lie of the terrain in a few of these areas as well to 
make it easier to put it down some decals and obviously make it feel a bit more realistic especially when you're putting car cars down to park if the terrain is a little bit too up in the air obviously the vehicles look like they're submerged in the concrete which um, doesn't go down too well it's also been quite a while since i've done an industrial sort of build so this was really really refreshing i had a lot of assets already that i collected prior to even building um, anything on the island and there's so many really cool little details we've got all these lorries and their trailers and some trucks and vans and the decals themselves so i could really really excel with the decal laying down here because i wanted the concrete to feel obviously used you know in that sense and i wanted to look fresh and neat and all that i wanted to have it um sort of dirty dusty some tire marks and that like it's actually being used regularly for the purposes of obviously the factories around here so if you aren't using decals do do try and use them a bit more and obviously use them with the up and down page up and page down option to limit how much of the, the decals come through because it really does make a difference So now we're working on the car park for this Morrisons. Now this Morrisons is actually very lifelike in terms of how it looks versus what there actually is in this particular part. So that's really cool. And I'm really loving these car parking zones as well. The, uh, the ones on the workshop here, they work so well. The fact that they are easier to place than anything other than I've used really does help out and you can be a bit more selective with where you place them. You're not forced in terms of having a car parking lot, so to speak. We can make these fancy looking designs of the car park because the UK car parks are not so much like that. Certainly on the Isle of Wight, there's a, a lot less space available, it seems, when they're putting down these car parks and you do get some irregular designs and patterns and I really like that. It really does bring it out, especially when you put some foliage around and uh, yeah, just making it look different and making it really, really pop. And I really do love placing down these trolley little uh, sheds, I guess they're classed as. Um, again, so realistic. Putting in the trolleys as well, just to make it again look more lifelike, I guess. Um, it really does change the whole look of the build. Um, and yeah, I just really love using all of these assets. The props and assets in the workshop, you know, there's been so much added over the years. It's just incredible. You can always find something that's suitable. And if not, you can make use of P.O., our lovely, lovely friend P.O., and make things look as close as you possibly can by doing so. So on screen now, we are changing up this area and I had a few ideas for this particular area and I did actually look in on the uh, Google Maps at this segment and there is actually a car sales area now we're not talking about a car sales area in the sense of a Volkswagen or a Ford this is more of a I guess a just a car salesman area so in the sense of selling a, an array of different types of cars um, not so much dedicated to a particular brand so these ones are a lot more sort of cabin based so you have little porter cabins where the people are um, it's not so much a solid building they tend to just pop up here and there when there's space available so i wanted to use these porter cabins here um, and join a few together to make it a bigger um, bigger area um, and obviously because it's you know it seems like it's just been a plot of land that someone's just renting or leasing just to put the cars in i wanted to try and make it look a bit more destroyed and not so exciting um, which is what you tend to see if you do go to these um, these particular uh, car sales areas they they aren't on pristine land it's sometimes just a, you know a dirt 
dirt track or something like that. They're not as um, prestige as it would be when you're going to a an actual vendor's um, sort of sales HQ. So I wanted to try and get that feeling across by um, really roughing up the area of the roads with the decals, etc. Putting in some protection for the obviously the owners. They're going to put some shielding around the cars to ensure no one can steal them when not there, etc. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to find a selection of cars. Obviously, we're lucky enough to have so many of those in the workshop and just plop that down and just make it look like a little area for people to sell their cars. You know, very simple, very basic, the typical flag out there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all that I wanted to do for that. But I've never done anything like that. I've always used the pre-built car showrooms, whereas I think this is a lot more realistic um, for the island itself and i wanted to try something a little bit different as well really you know spice things up a little bit so really that's the main area of this segment built up now we're gonna just detail this now bring it up to life and add some foliage etc but for the time being i want to hear your thoughts going back to the comment earlier of merchandise now i'm not going to be doing this to try and make hundreds of pounds now that I've got a nice logo, I personally want to have a nice pug game in mug <laughs> um, and maybe a jumper or something along those lines. Now I'm looking to do something um, and obviously I would offer it out to you guys as well if you're interested. So let me know in the comment section below if you would be interested in some sort of pug game and merch. And if so, what exactly would you be after? A mug, a cap, a mouse mat? Let me know in the comment section below and I will certainly look to set up some sort of online store where you're able to, to buy a bit of merch to support the channel further. But anyway guys, that is pretty much it for today. We have got some really cool first person views coming up here of the build. This is the car parking lot. Unfortunately, some of the tires are a little bit submerged into concrete, so, so ignore that. But I love these first person views. They look so realistic and especially this area being an industrial commercial zone, it just pops, it really does. The detail level of these buildings as well. I think we've kind of done a good job here <laughs> with the build itself. I think they work really nice hand in hand. How did you think the build turned out guys? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you want to see next built on the island. And of course, if you did enjoy the video, please do hit that like button to show your support. And if you want to see future bit of videos and you don't want to miss out, also hit that subscribe button now. Other than that, guys, enjoy these final cinematics and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.